All right, first we'll look at the schematic to the multi uh, monostable multivibrator circuit. In this case, I'm using a CD4047 with a voltage range of oh, 3 to 15 volts. Then, then you can watch three short video clips on how this, can, how this is used and set up. A one shot essentially is you have a pulse come in down here. Now this capacitor and this resistor form what is called a differentiator. What is, I had a square wave going in, but this particular configuration is for a positive going slope will trigger an out, a high output on Q, which is pin 10. This can be configured. You'll have to rearrange these, how this is connected to use a negative going slope to do the same thing. The pulse width of the output pulse is dependent on the value of R1 and C1. The formula, and it's on the website, is 2.48 times R in ohms times C in farads. Just for argument's sake, a 0.1 microfarad and a 90K resistor will give you a range of something like 0.1 to 22.32 milliseconds. So you can change these values depending on the frequency of your input pulse and so forth. That's all there is to it. Now I have seen these used using 555 timers, but I think this is the easiest, does the best job, and the components are cheap. Uses for this, um, wave shaping. If you've got something that has a real narrow pulse, you can trigger the output on and you can adjust the output pulse width which is easier, for instance, to count some event, for example, and have the Arduino be able to read it. Make sure, though, VCC is set at 5 volts if you're going to use it with an Arduino or, what, or whatever. Don't connect VCC to 15 and connect it to your Arduino, and, well, it won't work anymore. Um, this is useful for things like this is part of a series I've done on Geiger counters and Geiger counter tubes. So the three videos you'll see, you'll see two of them will show the relationship of the trigger pulse versus the output. The third one will show you the spikes from a Geiger counter and the output produced from the spikes. This is a great way to clean up waveforms and so forth. So let's move on and enjoy the three video clips and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. All right, this is on my oscilloscope. What you're looking at over here is your trigger pulse and this turns on the high output on Q. If I adjust the pot, I can vary the pulse, I can vary the output on time by a combination of a potentiometer and a capacitor, as you see here. This could have all kinds of handy uses, like such as if you're using a Geiger counter that happens to have very short pulses you can widen the pulses out a bit like this. All right, you're looking at a view of my oscilloscope. Down here in channel two, you should be able to see my finger. You will see trigger pulses. This comes from my signal generator. And this is on the CD4047 side of a 22 picofarad capacitor. Up here is the output. When I adjust R1, the potentiometer, I always get the signal triggered by the pulse, but I can control the pulse width of the Q output. 
And as you see, I can adjust it here to whatever I want. The biggest uh, advantage of this, not only can I control the output, but if I'm trying to read a pulse like this off of an Arduino, it won't read it or it's going to mess it up. It's a very bad pulse to try to read on a microcontroller. The advantages of a monostable multivibrator is an output like this. I get a nice square wave output and this does a better job than a compar comparator does. And again, if I, I, I can control the pulse width of the output by simply adjusting the potentiometer or changing out the value of my timing capacitor. Incidentally, you might hear a little noise in the background. That is the heat exchanger fan on my wood stove. So once again, input pulse, positive going, output pulse, and the on time is determined by the RC combination. And as I adjust the pot, I can adjust the time on for the output. What will we be looking at this time is the output from my Rad Alert 50 Geiger counter. This is taken of the actual output from the tube and I'm going to hold a radioactive source, test source, up to the device. You notice the pulses down here come directly from the tube, but I can control the output pulse width with my multi-vibrator. Uh, multi and while it might be a little hard for you to see, this creates output pulses that are easier for an Arduino or similar microcontroller to read. Let's kill the sound a bit. There we go. If you look at your pulses. And like I said, you'll see the Geiger counter pulses below and I control the output through the mon uh, through the monostable multivibrator, AK the CD4047. So this was a good way to clean up pulses in order for your Arduino or other microcontroller to read the count from a Geiger Buller tube.